I just spent the last five months with the Nikon Z30 camera. This camera is Nikon's third entry into their DX mirrorless camera lineup. What the Nikon Z30, Z50, and ZFC all have in common, 21 megapixel CMOS sensor, the ISO range from 100 to 51,000 native, expandable up to 200,000. They all shoot 4K 30 frames per second with no crop. They all feature the human animal eye tracking with 209 focus points. They all have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth connectivity. They all shoot 11 frames per second. Although on a sheet of paper, they all seem to be the same. They differ greatly in practical application. And I think every genre of creator, whether you're a photographer or videographer, or just a straight up Nikon connoisseur can all appreciate these cameras. But what makes this camera, the Nikon Z30, a viable choice for content creators in 2023? Okay, so let's talk about picture quality. Now, I just rattled off a bunch of stats about the Nikon Z30, but here's some photos that I took over the last couple months using the Z30. As you can see, the pictures came out really nice. I, I'm not surprised, I'm not mind blown or anything like that, but I really do appreciate that Nikon's able to keep the picture quality pretty consistent. I think the, the images that you see, some of them are lightly edited. I adjusted the exposure, the shadowing just a little bit, straightened the horizon, things like that. I also included some images that are unedited, just straight out of the camera, but I did bring it with me on a couple client photo shoots and a wedding. Now, I didn't have a lot of time to test it out and pair it with other lenses and things like that. So I mainly, well, actually in these images, the only lens I used was the 14 to 24 f 2.8 lens the wedding was with the f mount i believe and the engage the maternity shoot was with the z mount 14 to 24 and it looks really good now as you know lenses do make a huge difference on picture quality the clarity the the color the um, sharpness and so the pictures came out really good i think it would make a difference if i was just using the kit lens that would have come with the z30 so um just keep that in mind but i think especially if you're a content creator and you're looking to take like product photography or doing unboxings, things like that, the Nikon Z30 is definitely gonna give you the quality that you need, um, especially when you're out and about vlogging, things like that. You're definitely gonna be able to take some incredible images. The Nikon Z30 does a really good job at taking photos. Next up, let's talk about video quality. Now, I'm not a big videographer, okay? And I say I vlog and this and that, but I don't really get out much. I did do some videoing, but I don't have like the gimbals and things like that to do sick transitions. So you're gonna see a lot of just random fun video clips. All of them were mostly shot in 1080 at 30 frames per second. I didn't really test the limits of like 4K and things like that. Um, I think for the most part, the video quality is pretty nice. So as far as capturing content, the Nikon Z30 is gonna be really good at doing that. Um, as far as like that eye tracking and everything like that, it's really responsive and really snappy and it keeps your video really in focus a lot. And I'm using right now the Nikon Z5 and I had just switched the Nikon Z5 with the Z30 because I've been streaming with this a lot. And I gotta say the Z5 seems a little bit slower than the Z than the Z30. And uh, I was really impressed with how well this thing um, autofocused, especially on people's faces and the eyes and stuff like that. So as far as video quality goes, just look at some of these clips here. I think it looks really good. None of these clips are edited. I didn't add any LUTs or presets or anything to them. So um, as far as video quality goes, I think the Nikon Z30 delivers more than you need. 4K 30 frames per second, shoots 1080 at 120 frames per second for some really smooth, slow motion. But when you're looking at cameras at this price point and for like this type of demographic for just small content creators, I think the Nikon Z30 more than delivers enough quality as far as video capabilities go. All right, let's talk about the Nikon Z30 design, ergonomics, and features. The Nikon Z30, I've got to say, is probably the coolest entry-level mirrorless camera that they've got. The Z50 is cool, but without that EVF, this makes it way more compact, way more sleeker, which I love. But you also have to use the LCD screen, which is a very angle 
LCD screen. You probably have seen this on the Nikon D5000 series cameras. I used to have a D5100 that I really loved and I was really used to that flip out screen. Um, but after using the tilting screen on the Z50 and on the Z5, the Z62, I much prefer that as a photographer um, when I'm out there shooting and I got to flip this out. I feel like I'm like recording a home movie. The LCD screen is nice. The touch screen is really responsive. Um, the build quality is really solid, even though it is Nikon's lightest entry level mirrorless camera. I believe it's about 40 grams lighter than the Z50. So again, more things to appreciate about this awesome design. But for one handed shooters, I got to say the Z50 does it better. And let me explain. So this lever right here to switch between video and photo mode used to be up here on the dial. And then this recording button used to be up here by the shutter button. And then lastly, this delete button over here used to be down here. So everything was in reach of your right thumb or your right index finger. But with this Nikon Z30, you kind of got to have two hands on the camera to be able to operate everything. I think for videographers, a lot of you guys are going to be having this on a tripod or on a monopod or something like that, um, which also Nikon has included a recording lamp, which um, this little light here blinks red when you're recording, which is great, especially if you're recording long. And uh, speaking of long, Nikon has extended the recording time to 125 minutes, almost two hours of recording time. Now, there is an asterisk. It is 1080, 24 frames per second for 125 minutes recording. Um, not bad, but if you're going to record at 4K 30, they're going to give you 35 minutes. Um, I think as far as designs, ergonomics features, the Z30 packs a lot and stays pretty consistent with the rest of the lineup, of the entry level Z mount cameras. All right, now let's talk about live streaming with the Nikon Z30. So probably for about two, two and a half months straight, I've been using the Nikon Z30 for live streaming and it did a really good job. And I did appreciate this very angle LCD screen, being able to monitor and use the touchscreen to change settings while live streaming is super pog, huge W, okay? Whereas using the Nikon Z5 or the Z50, with that tilting LCD screen, I literally have to get up on my desk to look down at the LCD screen because I don't want to move my camera around and mess up the position that it's in already. So getting that LCD screen to flip out towards me is huge. I did use this camera with an FTZ adapter with my F mount lenses to get that better quality on my stream. I used it mainly with a 24 1.4 F mount lens and it did a fantastic job. Um, there was definitely enough light. Um, this camera also a champ with auto focusing and keeping your eyes in focus. I was able during stream just to see that little yellow square around my eye at all times. It did a really good job. Now I went ahead and I recorded a bunch of videos showing the difference between the kit lens at 16, 24 and 35 compared to using the 24 1.4 I have um, I have a 16 millimeter fisheye 2.8 Nikon lens, and then I'm using a 35 1.4. So let me show you that really quickly. This is what the 16 millimeter focal length looks like using the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens that comes with a Nikon Z30. Because the Nikon Z30 is a crop sensor, this is going to give you about a 25 millimeter look on a full frame camera. This is the widest that this kit lens goes and being on the crop sensor, I think this looks really well. I mean, especially in the low light areas, it looks very sharp. It looks very clean. Um, the background isn't as soft because of the bokeh. The aperture can only uh, open up to 3.5 at its widest. So not bad. I think if you're going to buy this camera and use the kit lens for live streaming, I think you've got a comparable setup for sure. But as you will see, I'll show what my F mount lenses look like using the Nikon Z30 and it looks incredible. This is what the Nikon 16 millimeter F 2.8D Nikkor lens looks like on the Nikon Z30 APS-C sensor camera. Very crisp, 
very clear. You can see everything in my room and that's why I don't really like this lens for live streaming is because I don't want you to see all my books and junk and boxes everywhere. I mean, it is kind of cool. Maybe one of these days I'll get used to this type of wide angle look, but for now I do prefer the 24 millimeter 1.4 for the Nikon Z30. Let me show you what that looks like. Here's what the 24 millimeter focal length looks like using the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens that comes with the Nikon Z30 crop sensor camera. This look right here, 24 millimeter is gonna be about 38 millimeter with a full frame camera. Um, this is my preferred look on stream. I'm at the widest aperture it can go at 24 millimeters, which is a 4.2. And so as you can see, it is a little bit darker. That's because we zoomed in a little bit and that aperture had to close up. So um, what we can do is just adjust the ISO, maybe by two. There we go and bring it back to um, a similar look and feel as we did when we had it at 16 millimeter with the F3.5. This is what a 24 millimeter 1.4 F mount Nikon lens looks like on the Nikon Z30. Factoring in the crop sensor, this is gonna give about a 35 millimeter look. To be precise, it's about 38.7 millimeter. I just looked it up on the calculator, but it looks very sharp, very bright. The bokeh is very soft, and it gives me a lot more range as far as bringing down my ISO, opening up my aperture to give me a very soft background. This is my favorite lens to use with my Nikon Z30. All right. And lastly, this is what 35 millimeters looks like on the kit lens, the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens that comes with a Nikon Z30 camera. As you can see, still very clear, still very crisp. I had to bump up the ISO two more times to 1250 to give us a similar look like we had with the other lenses just before this. Um, as you can see in the low light, it's not too bad. I mean, I can see some grain dancing here on my monitor. It could just be my monitor. But um, when you're making YouTube videos, I mean, you can use anything, right? You can use a potato. It really doesn't matter. But if you do care about having a high quality live stream or high quality YouTube videos, I think the kit lens that comes with a Nikon Z30 is pretty fantastic. But as you have seen, the bokeh with these F mount lenses is really nice opening up the lens to 1.4. Um, I love my prime lenses and using these with the Nikon Z30 gave me really, really good results. And lastly, what you're seeing now is a 35 1.4 F-mount Nikon lens being used on the Nikon Z30. As you can see, the lens is very bright, very sharp. The bokeh is very soft. I really like this and using this 35 millimeter 1.4 with my full frame camera on my live stream is my favorite setup ever. But because this is the crop sensor, I've been using my 24 1.4 to get that wider angle, get it closer to that 35 millimeter. But anyways, there it is. Pretty great, right? I mean, if you've got F mount lenses lying around and you got the FTSZ adapter, I highly recommend you pairing that with your Nikon Z30 just to be able to let a little bit more light in and then be able to soften the background um, a bit, especially when you have cool lights and stuff going on. Definitely makes a huge difference as far as quality goes for live streaming. Now I do have to say, using the Nikon Z30 with the LCD screen closed, there were a couple times I did that, the camera would overheat and it would stop working, okay? And a couple times during stream, it would cut out and I had to switch to another camera. Um, with the LCD screen open, I had no problems with this thing overheating. It does get really hot in my room. Like right now, it's about 89. Usually during the afternoons, it gets like 92, 93, especially when I'm streaming. So that could be abnormal temperature. I don't know. But um, just be aware, have your LCD screen open when you're streaming for three, four, five hours. Lastly, let's talk about price for the Nikon Z30. Right out the gate, it is $709 for the body only. If you want the kit lens, it's about 850 bucks. Now that puts it right smack in the sweet spot, okay? Um, for the Sony, I believe Alpha Z, 
V E 10. I had a YouTube comment come across on one of my older videos and he told me, you know, why didn't I compare this Sony camera with the Nikon Z30? And to be honest, bro, I didn't know that this camera existed, but on paper, this camera looks amazing. Side by side comparison to the Nikon Z30. Very, very, very similar. Now, I wouldn't say that this Sony camera is better because there are some features that the Nikon Z30 has that are better than the Sony one, but they're, they're right along the same pricing. For this Sony, it's 700 bucks. This, uh, for the body, same thing as the Z30. Um, with the lens, the Sony has a leg up at $800 with the kit lens versus the Nikon Z30 850. So there's little trade-offs here and there. Also the other Sony cameras that are recommended constantly for new creators, even today, the Sony Alpha 6000, the Alpha 6100. Those are still really great choices for content creators today. Um, the Sony a6100, the body comes in at 750 brand new and you're getting this body for 700 brand new. So the Z30 has a really good uh, price point. Um, if you're going to look at Canon, Canon has a really nice feature rich camera that's coming in at about a thousand dollars just for the body. And then if you're looking at like the lower tier Canon, the M50, it's really lacking a lot of features that the Z, uh, that the Nikon Z30 has and the other Sony cameras have. So for about $710, this Nikon Z30, I feel is completely worth the price. In conclusion, I will say that the Nikon Z30 and the Z50 are going to age like fine wine, much like the A6000 and the A6100. Already, I think if you go on mpb.com, you can find the Nikon Z50 for about 650 bucks in a really good used um, condition. So th these are cameras that I really wanted to get. The Nikon Z50 came out in 2019 and it's still camera that I would love to have with me when I go travel, when I need to create content, do videos like outside this office or outside or whatever. Um, these cameras are more than capable. And if you're a content creator looking for a good camera to invest in a good camera system, the Nikon Z30 is definitely worth looking at. I'm definitely going to miss it. I got to send it back to Nikon this week. So um, everyone, maybe in the comments, say goodbye, Nikon Z30. We'll, um, we'll definitely give you a good send off. But if you liked this content and you like the content that I make on this channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I really, really appreciate all the support. Thanks for the likes. And um, definitely consider joining us Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays on Twitch. I stream in the morning times about like 9, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we do everything like photography related. We, we edit photos, we critique each other's work. Um, we do like raw photo editing contests. Come on by on live stream, definitely check us out. If you have any questions about editing, workflow, stuff like that, please uh, let me know and uh, hit me up in the comments if you have any questions. I would love to hear what you guys think about um, the Nikon Z30. If you have this camera or if you're planning to get it, if you have any questions, let me know. But I'll see you guys on the next one. I appreciate it. Cheers.